Acceptance versus the power to change. Two hotly debated schools of thought. Which should you choose? Should you surrender yourself like a leaf on the river of life? Or should you actively seek to change what does not suit you? Believe it or not, there is no difference between the two as I hope to show in this video. I hope this video helps you unleash your innate power and helps you to understand how you landed in the life you are living, as well as how you can change it. I hope it will resolve the seeming paradox between acceptance and change and help you get started consciously bringing forward what you would like to see. But first, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you believe in the innate oneness of all things? If you're watching this video, my guess would be yes, you probably do. And that's good because this belief is your key to unlocking the seeming paradox of acceptance versus change. However, just like having a key in your pocket, you can possess it, but it will do you no good if you do not use it. I hope today you will use it to unlock your understanding if you have not already. Acceptance and change aren't two separate schools of thought. Not at all. Acceptance and change are two parts of the same thing. They are like breathing, the inhale and the exhale. Think of it, if you didn't see the larger picture, which is the act of breathing, your mind would say inhaling and exhaling are opposites. They would seem to have nothing to do with each other. In fact, they would seem in opposition to each other because inhaling focuses on acquiring, while exhaling focuses on releasing. They seem utter opposites, but together they are called breathing. So seen correctly, they are two parts of the whole, and acceptance and change are exactly the same thing. Two parts of the whole. Change is the inhale, and acceptance is the exhale. These two always walk hand in hand. In fact, to no one is to automatically know the other, whether or not you have brought it into your consciousness. Today, this is what I hope to help you do. When we begin to align ourselves with acceptance and see its beauty and truth, we have begun to understand that things are what they are, yet they are not random. Those who still struggle with this must take a closer look at their beliefs. Do you believe in the innate oneness of all things? Or do you still need to distance yourself from portions of it because you are unhappy with an outcome? Do you need to somehow still keep it distinct and different from you by saying it is a product of chaos or fate or by assigning it to someone or something larger than yourself like God or life? If we find ourselves in such a position, it's important to realize that what we are feeling is just an emotional reaction that stems from dissatisfaction or fear or both. In short, we don't like it and don't want anything to do with its creation, so we're trying to distance ourselves by attributing it to chaos or fate. And here is where we must use our key, our knowledge of the innate oneness of everything. To set ourselves free from this falsity because nothing can be outside of you. Where is there to put it? And when we understand this, the act of acceptance blooms from the numb surrender of some schools of thought into the beautiful flower that it is. It is when we begin to see that it is us, consciously and unconsciously, calling the life we experience to ourselves that we find true acceptance, and true acceptance is beautiful and in stark contrast to the there's nothing I can do about it type of false acceptance, because that's resignation, not acceptance, isn't it? True acceptance occurs when you realize that it is your hand which has delivered all your experience, as perplexing as that may sound right now. But as the poet Khalil Gibran said, the veil will be lifted by the hand that wove it. I plan to try and do another video later which goes into more detail, but it's important to go ahead and at least try and explain how some of this could be true. Let's say that your consciousness, which also includes your unconsciousness because in truth nothing is unconscious to you, your consciousness is sort of like a set of shelves. 
The top shelves are overflowing with the events of our lives. It's all we focus on, though we really aren't quite sure how it all got there. So we make up stories. We say it was good luck or bad luck or fate or punishment or we worked for it or we got what we deserve or it's due to karma or that it's random or perhaps a reward or punishment from God or whatever. And we pick one of these reasons and we try to believe in it, but it feels wrong because it is wrong. And it also makes us feel vulnerable and with good reason because by these choices we have no say or contribution to what happens to us. So what is really happening? Yes, the top shelves are overflowing with people, things, and events in our lives, but how do they really get there? You have to get on your knees among the dust and grime and look at the bottom shelf below. What you see when you finally look is actually the gears of your world in action. This is like turning around in Plato's cave. When they turned around, they could see for the first time what was actually creating the images that they took as real. Like that, what is there on the lower shelf is actually what is pulling the strings in your life. It determines what happens to us, how we live our lives, and what we experience. This lower shelf is like our unconscious mind, but it doesn't matter if we are aware of it or not. It takes whatever we have given permission to be there and creates what we call our lives. This is its function and it does it remarkably. It doesn't make judgments. It simply takes what we've placed there and uses it. What have you placed there? What have you given permission to be placed there by someone else? And most of all, how do we change what is there? It's actually simple, though like riding a bike, you'll get better at it as you go along. But here's an exercise to begin clearing your bottom shelf right this very moment. Think of the thing you most dislike in your life and ask yourself why it is there. Listen very carefully. You will have an immediate answer. Though sometimes the answers are not at all what we expect or what we are prepared to expect. This also happened to me and so it took a few tries before I was prepared to hear the truth about a particular question. So I will warn you that unless you are prepared to accept the truth, you won't have any initial hope in changing anything, but that doesn't matter, because if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. These hidden and often unconscious beliefs on your bottom shelf is what is creating your world. Everything you are, everything you see, everything you experience, and collectively, we create what we call our world. As with most higher truths, it is a deceptively simple thing that hands you the keys to the kingdom, and in this case, we must only see what is there and replace it with what we'd rather be in. And we see what is there by simply asking ourselves, because we know. We already know. And if you are prepared to hear it, the world is your oyster. Once you see what is there, you simply replace those thoughts with what you want to be there. And as you get better and better at discerning, your results come to you more and more quickly and more and more exact. That's really all there is to it. So, it is actually through true acceptance of what is. Through our understanding and acceptance of whatever is occurring because we have called it forth. By this understanding and acceptance that we made it, whether consciously or unconsciously, we gain the ability to change it. Do you see? And this is how we go about it, simply by realizing that it is occurring and looking on our bottom shelf to see what is there doing that. We only need to ask ourselves to be told the exact and real reason and medium. So acceptance is the exhale. It is the unrestrained release of all that we have drawn unto ourselves. And change is the inhale, the deliberate bringing in of the new. Viewed separately, they seem opposites, but viewed correctly, they're just two parts of the whole. By your inhaling and exhaling, you have created the life you live. I hope this helps to put some confusion and debates to bed and you begin today to discover what is on your bottom shelf and replace it with what you'd like to see in your world.
because you have this ability. You have this and more. 